Yep. That's start. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can see the screen, right? Yes. Okay. So welcome all to the PI demo. Uh, today we would be discussing on the project overview, what we have done and what need to be uh, done for the coming sprints and all. So the completed part here is we have successfully completed the deployment of DLT using standalone Helm charts for Bezu Quorum and uh, with Vault and Proxy. Uh, uh, now what's new in the Bevel is like the Substrate deployment has been completed uh, without Vault and Proxy. With Vault and Proxy should be completed soon. And the same for R3 Coda Enterprise deployment has been completed. Uh, the new features are uh, deployment of a Hyperledger DLT network where Ansible controller is in progress and the user guide will be updated uh, and the recent changes we can have uh, in the readmes soon. Um, we have successfully merged the Substrate, Fabric and Corda Enterprise with deployments uh, with no vault and no proxy has been merged and uh, users can uh, try reading the readmes and uh, implement the DLT network uh, um, uh, using the standalone Helm charts. And the to-do we have is R3 Coda Enterprise and Fabric. So for the R3 Coda Enterprise, we have support for deployment using proxy and vault that has to be done and testing and documentation for a new notary operations and enabling support for node firewall. Adding code to download node and notary shell has to be completed for the Coda Enterprise. So that is in progress and same for the fabric we have uh, support for all jobs related to the chain code and enabling all the operate fabric operations and updating readme's uh, deploying the fabric network with ansible is still in progress so yeah these are the agenda that uh, uh, we have for today and uh, we will be walking through the substrate deployment uh, without vault and proxy um, uh, now uh, we would be uh, walking through that one. So yeah, Soro, uh, you can share your screen and start the deploying uh, of the substrate without Vault and Proxy. Yeah, th thank you, Sai. Hi and welcome. Uh, so this demo is related to one of the Bevel supported platform, which is Substrate. In this demo, we will try to explore how we can deploy the network using just Helm. Additionally, we will also see what changes we have implemented to make it possible. So now I'm going to share my screen. Uh, just a moment for that. And is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to open the readme that we are going to follow entirely throughout the demo. And uh, with this readme, I'm going to explain the Helm charts and uh, I'm also going to cover how we can follow this to deploy the network. So I will just can you increase the font size, please. So yeah, yeah, sure. Just click uh, control plus, or I think that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, so. This is the master readme to deploy the uh, substrate platform. So basically we are going to deploy our platform without the proxy and without the vault. So what is mean by that is that all our uh, network communication will happen within the cluster itself, not, uh, not uh, out of the scope of the cluster. And uh, whatever keys or the data we will generate, we are not going to store over any third party database uh, we are just going to keep the keys in our cluster only so yeah that is what without proxy and without vault so in the process of deploying substrate the very first step that we are going to perform is to install the genesis so the step says to execute the command uh, which says that uh, install this helm chart uh, which in uh, under this name space and if namespace is not present, then create it as well. So first we will see what this Helm chart says. So I will just uh, open it and then we will explore. So this Helm chart basically does two things. First is to 
generate the keys so to generate the keys we have that file here and the second thing that it does is to generate the genesis file for that we have this file here the genesis.yml so let's uh, have a look how we generate the keys for the uh, nodes so we follow a uh, uh, a tool which is the DSCP node uh, CLI tool that basically generates the node for our member and the validator node. And uh, yeah, this is the command at line 91 that does the generations of keys. So we, after generating the keys, uh, we basically wrap them in a JSON format. Once we have got that JSON format, we will create the secrets out of them. So that is how we are generating and uh, uh, we are saving the keys in in the cluster in the form of the secrets so whatever json we will create here it will be going to be utilized as a secrets so our keys will be uh, in the form of secrets within the cluster so this is the one part of the genesis helm chart and the second one is to generate the genesis so here also we are going to utilize the same tool which is the dscp node cli tool that will generate the genesis and also the uh, the thing that we are going to do after generating the genesis is to insert the keys so whatever keys we have generated here for whatever node it could be either member or validator node so we are just going to insert them into the genesis along with some account information balance information and uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much uh, uh, while updating the uh, genesis just uh, we have to insert our customized information so that we can start our, uh, our network uh, according to our need only so we will see uh, uh, the command again uh, so this command says that install the genesis chart using this file so i'm just going to open this file so this file basically contains the values that we can customize so it says that uh, so yeah basically uh, this is the section where we have defined that we are going to store our uh, secrets uh, within the cluster we are not going to use hashicorp as a uh, uh, hashicorp as a vault to store our secrets so our secrets will remain to the kubernetes cluster itself and the cloud that we are using uh, is the Azure one. We support AWS and GCP as well. So, and the part that related to the uh, substrate uh, node, so that is defined here. So here we are basically defining how many total validators we want. So that count we can specify here. And in the same way, we can specify how many members node we want. So it is, uh, something that we can change according to our need if you want three then we can go with three or something else as of now i will like to keep it with uh like to keep it four only and there is one another field which states that how many balance we want to allocate to the to the account that holds by the member node so that is why we are keeping the balance parameter inside the member so uh, one thing is here is that accounts hold by the member in this substrate so we are going to allocate some balance to it and all these informations and will be going to be dumped in, into into our genesis file and uh, once we have our genesis file uh, we are basically going to convert into the raw format so this is the genesis that contains our customized information so we have to convert into the row format once it is converted into the row format we can't make any new changes to it so after converting it into row format we have to keep this thing uh, remember that no new changes will be allowed after this step and uh, after converting it into the row format we are also adding one extra layer of security by encoding it into the six base 64 format so yeah, yeah, additional security layer over the raw format of Genesis. So once we have that file in the base64 format, we are just going to create our Genesis in the form of config map. So again, uh, let's go back to the value file and 
have an overview of what we have uh, seen so far. So, so total five nodes, right? Four validators and one member. So total five nodes. So for all of them, we are going to generate keys, which means that we are going to generate five secrets through this file, generate keys. And also we are going to use this information to update our genesis so that our genesis should know to which node or uh, uh, to which node uh, it contains the information about and and uh, how our network should be deployed with what nodes all the information will go in the genesis once we have our genesis uh, ready uh, we can move to the uh, uh, deployment of node so i will just now deploy this chart and we will see the secret and the genesis that we have seen in these two files so yeah let me execute this command before that we have to update our dependencies so i will just quickly do that so these are the dependencies for our substrate genesis helm chart so yeah So in the same way, I will just update the dependencies for rest two of the charts. Uh, yeah, so update depends on dependency updation part is done. So, so we are going to install our very first chart. So let's go to the monitoring tool. Here we will see our keys has been generated or not. So as we have selected four validators, so for each of them we have keys and for a one member node also we have keys, uh, keys as well. And uh, uh, in the config map we should have a genesis. So let it complete then we will find a genesis config map there yeah, it's completed yes so we have genesis here so it contains so this is our genesis in the base 64 format and this is the information related to the pseudo uh, related to the pseudo keys that will be helpful if we want any new node after all these uh, current nodes that we support so at that time we will be utilizing the pseudo keys so as of now we will go with whatever nodes we have here so so we have installed the genesis so now we will move to the second part yeah. yeah so second part says that you have to install the boot node and for boot node we have to install the another chart which is the substrate node chart and let's yeah, have have a look at this first then we will go with the command So this uh, substrate node chart basically is responsible for, uh, is basically responsible to our start the node. And uh, the one thing here is that uh, the node that we want to start should have some identity. And how we will provide uh, that valid identity to that node uh, that we will be basically seeing going to see here. you know any any node uh, can't join the network uh, they have their identity uh, that is why we have generated the keys so these keys basically means that we are generating the identities for our nodes and uh, let's uh, is it fine the font size is fine 
yeah uh, yeah so basically if we look at the step 7 so it says that start the nodes but to start the nodes uh, we need some informations uh, for example the node key so this is the id for a current node so the current node should have a valid keys with them so that uh, so that it can become the part of a substrate network uh, so basically whatever the information uh, this command needs to start the node all all those information we are going to capture from step 1 uh, to step 6 so uh, all this step will be responsible just to fulfill the requirement of this step 7 so for example if we see the node key how we are getting the node key so in the same way as we have created this secret so from the secret we will fetch the node key uh, for example we can see if we want to deploy a validator one node then we need its node key so here it is so we need this node key and to extract it uh uh to extract it via the code via the container via the container so for that we have this code here in the same way we are going to extract the ora and the grandpa keys for each of the node and uh, and once we have the uh, uh this uh, identity or the keys for the node uh, uh we will basically pass to the start the node command and it will basically start the node and there are some more information required like what is the endpoint to access our node so for example the public address so our address or the port should be generated in dynamic way that it will support uh, different kind of uh, uh, communication like if we are using the ambassador then our external address should be generated according to that but as we know we are seeing only without proxy uh, so we are just going with cluster ip endpoints so it will generate the uh, endpoints using the uh, svc.cluster.local which is the uh, by default uh, suffix of the cluster ip and this is the port that we are going to uh, enable for the service that will basically point and uh, to the uh, pod uh, that is actually our node so that is here so this is like we are uh, calling to the service then it will call to the uh, then it will hit at the uh, pods end point so in this way we are passing all the informations in this uh, main command which is to start the node and here one more thing which is very important uh, that the after the genesis we are going to install the node so our validator one node uh, as we know that we are installing the very first node in the very fresh substrate network so the very first node should be deployed as a boot node so for that we are explicitly defining here that node dot is boot node enabled equal to false which can be read it like as the uh, hey current node are you looking for uh, any existing node so base so it will say that no i am not uh, uh, so that is why it is false here so it is not looking for any uh, existing node it is the very first node so we have to make it as a boot node so so this command will just going to deploy our first node as the boot node so let's do that and uh, yeah let's have a look at this file also first so this is inside the values then the nodes so here uh, and uh, yeah the 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 parameter that we have explicitly setting here is is uh, set to false here so uh, but here it is not set to any value so uh no need to worry because the because that explicit command will going to override it to the false once it is false then this will become the boot node and the type of this node will be the uh, validator right so basically we are going to utilize the secrets of the uh, 
uh, validator uh, uh, one keys to start the validator one node. So now we, I think we are good to deploy our very first node. So I will just copy it as it is. Mm, so it is saying this one. Okay, let me do some cleanup first. Let's see it over here. So this is our first node as a boot node. Once this node one uh, in running state, then we can deploy other nodes as well. Yeah, so I just noticed there was another warning uh, when you installed uh, about yeah. the topology. Uh, can you fix that? I think I need to do inside the sub uh, storage class chart. Is it in storage class? Uh, I yeah I, yeah it's allowed topologies. I think it is depend there. Okay okay, got it. Mm, yeah. But allows topologies is false, right? Have you marked it as true? Maybe that's why it is coming. For the right. Storage, it should be under storage. Storage, okay. Okay. Maybe yeah. that's why it is causing that you have mm. not set the parameters correctly. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I yeah. will add it. So, yeah, I think, yeah, it is in running state. Let's see. It. Yeah, it's started fine. Peer count is zero now because only one node is running in the network. So, yeah, we are good to deploy additional nodes. So the third step to install the additional nodes. So before that, we have to do some modifications only once in this file. So, so what it says that uh, as we have deployed the boot node, then all the other nodes should look for the boot, uh, boot node to join the running network. So it says that, uh, are you uh, looking for a boot node then yeah we are looking for the boot node and we, we have to specify what is the name of your boot node and what is the endpoint of your boot node so that we are just going to do only once in our node.ml file so here our boot node will become the validator one because the validator one is the one that we have deployed as a boot node so this will become our name yeah so one thing on that i think this step is unnecessary uh, the editing part uh, your uh, this node.yaml should have those values already um, because uh, go and write it is yeah, not, okay. not not wrong okay so but that step is not necessary mm, yeah i got it uh, uh, because you are anyway saying mm -hmm. that uh, you are creating it with validator one, isn't it? So you know right. already, especially for for this case, mm -hmm. for no no proxy, it is always going to be the same thing, isn't it? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think so. You can already you know uh, save this in the sense uh, yeah, merge yeah. this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not so required step. Exactly. So it's your your steps hmm. are anyway going to create this, right, isn't right. it? Yeah. Right. So this can be merged, and if you go back uh, to the README, uh, the first one, the validator one, right? Uh, 
Yeah. So the validator one, uh, sorry, the boot node one. So there, I don't think you need to pass the values file, right? Because it should be already defaulted in the main chart. And just you override the is right. boot node enabled as false. Yeah, only this so way. minus minus values is I don't think it's required. You know, you can you should be you should modify your uh, main because you're not actually passing a lot of things. Right, right. Or I mean, even if you do, uh, I think uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you if you need to, then it's fine. Uh, then this uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so you can still have that, but yeah, like install additional nodes that uh, the first step is not, I don't think it's needed, right? Mm, right, yeah. Yeah, we are only going with one value. Yeah, no, no, if mm. you, this this can be, is fine. If you are kind of overriding, you have more values in your uh, normal, uh, in the main uh, values.yaml, uh, but yeah, that, that can, step can remain, uh, step two mm. with the whole thing. But yeah, if you scroll down, then, the port and all it should be already fixed. Right? Yeah, right. So I see that in your values it is eight zero eight zero. Is it still eight zero eight zero or is it three zero? Uh, yeah, uh, as of now it is eight zero eight zero. Okay. Yeah. So for three zero three uh three zero triple three, I think it is not uh, open for us. So just for deployment purpose, I use this one. Okay. Yeah, so let's. I think I have fixed it right. Uh, the name of the boot node and the endpoint of the boot node is yeah, it is done. So we are good to install our additional nodes as well. So I will going to deploy all of them and. the storage class so one two three to check are you creating the storage class in genesis uh no in, in this namespace in the no not in genesis in the, in the substrate node chart right no but when you are installing this why is it giving error that the storage class exists maybe the pvs or uh, pvs are not deleted no pvs should not be deleted if you uninstall the chart it should uninstall the the genesis uh, sorry the storage class as well show uh, me how yeah. you have uh, done the storage class mapping the mapping of the storage class it it, it deletes the storage class uh, i have observed but no no show me your requirements dot yama okay and uh, go and uh, so in your values.yaml go to this values.yaml search for storage i think storage is not yeah so that is the problem i think mm, okay. so you should override storage and pass the parameters of storage there mm. and uh, this is the mistake that you are doing because you have already defined the tag as, uh, sorry, the alias as storage. You are not using storage and you're not passing the parameters uh, from here, uh, the storage parameters, which is the topology falls or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is that the size, et cetera. Uh, yeah, so that's that's where I guess is, is not uh, creating the actual, it's not deleting uh, the param the storage class when you actually uninstall the node. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will be uh, updated. So I think, uh, yeah, I think we are, uh, we, we, we can continue, right? Mm-hmm. 
so we have deployed three nodes so far and let's deploy the rest two of them Top member one. Let's have a look at the logs. Yeah, they are able to discover each other. Soon the peer count will be updated to the four as we have total five nodes running. So yeah, it is getting updated. So basically uh, in the logs, we can see what is the current block that has been proposed. So best represents that and finalize represent that the block has been finalized by all the validators in the network. Once that is also done, then we, we will see that it is import, imported into the ledger of all the running nodes so that is what yep. basically happens here and yeah it is now updated to the correct count of peers so yeah this is how we can start the substrate uh, uh, network and the next step which is here is to install the ipfs node so in the ipfs node uh, it uh, it is basically allow us the endpoint uh, uh, where uh, uh, that can be utilized to store our data in the decentralized manner so so for that purpose for that uh, it is like an extra functionality uh, that will be providing a pair using these nodes so to deploy this node we just have to do one modification uh, which is to update the name of the node host. So here it will be this one. So I will just directly copy this one. Yeah, and again, the same thing. I don't yeah. think that is needed. You can just uh, already hard code it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is already there. So yeah, we can use the set, right? Hyphen, hyphen, set for, or is it hard code? Fine. No, you can put it here only, right? In 19, you can mm -hmm. save it because that is the only member that you have created. Mm, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's see what else is there in the steps. Mm, so yeah, once we have updated the node host, then we need the node ID of the of the uh, member node the the member node that we have picked here so that hmm. node id we need so for that we are just going to run this yeah. command it no, is... so that command is wrong hang on uh, so update that correctly secret name correctly don't put uh, yeah, so yeah, this right. readme file should not have any of these uh, placeholders placeholders yeah just edit it now uh, or in the readme uh, with member node hmm, yeah so it will become like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. done. And uh, now we can just start our IPFS node. Yeah. So yeah, it is, let's deploy the another one as well. Yeah, so I don't think you need another IPFS node. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, because the idea is that uh, for, yeah, that's where uh, the, my, the other question was coming is that uh, I think one thing is missing here is how to add a node in another namespace. So basically for another organization, what are mm -hmm. the steps needed? So that is something that you have to add and add the IPFS node there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, uh, needs yeah. To so be that because otherwise it, this, this tutorial is not complete. 
because someone who is deploying a blockchain network is not going to just create one member node, right? Uh, right they will right. create it, it another namespace as well. So give an example of that. I think the, that's where you will have add, need more additional things because you have to copy the Genesis file yeah right from this place to that place right because in that case there will be this the concept of secondary genesis that we have in bisu mm, yeah got it okay so only then this will be complete but yeah so far it's fine so show me the logs of the substrate uh, sorry the ipfs what has been created yeah Okay. No, no, go show me the pods. What, what are, so finally, if we create one IPFS node, what are the pods? What are the things that are running now on the namespace? Uh, under, under this. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Go to the front basically. Yeah. So you have, uh, subs validate four validators, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. and validator one is the, uh, the boot node. Yeah, right. right. And then you have one member and that uh, substrate, the IPFS node is basically connected to that member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, Genesis, gen. okay, so the generate keys is part of like a Genesis says right, pre-install? Right. Pre uh, both are post-install, but uh, generate okay. one with weightage one and it is with weightage two. Okay, okay, fine. So the first job will be the generate keys and then the yeah genesis will work yeah that's fine then and then the rest of them don't have any uh, pre-install they don't need any pre yeah yeah right right yeah so going back uh, if you go to the readme uh, if you want to take notes i guess you can yeah. just write there that yeah it should have basically yeah before cleanup not after cleanup mm -hmm. so before cleanup it you you have to also give an example of how to deploy this in another mm -hmm namespace yeah yeah i think they are doing suggests they go into future yeah uh do that um yeah it may be restricted because of how substrate has been designed but let's see okay mm, yeah yeah the yeah the jumping the genesis file uh, yes that, so that i think used. that part you'll have to do that you'll have yeah. to put the genesis there and you know that you can i think it should work with the current boot node if you pass the new boot node and also the uh the new set of keys has to be generated isn't it so that part right, will right. be common yeah except that genesis generation will not need it, be needed because you will be adding a new member node only and not a validator node hmm. So adding a, a new node uh, will require the keys and uh, that keys needs to be pushed into the Genesis as well. So it has to be in the Genesis as well? Yes. Okay, without them in the Genesis, it is not going to work. Yes, because in the Genesis, it uh, has a section for the node authorization. So that authorization section should okay. have all the nodes. Okay. But isn't the Genesis a, gen is a JSON file? Yeah, it is a JSON. Uh, but yeah, but, uh, once we convert it into the raw format, we can't uh, do further modification. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. But anyway, let's explore that. Otherwise, we'll have to, you know, uh, make this uh, a different, a little bit different way so that you initially only you have two namespaces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, got it. Yeah. So see, try that. Try if we can just add, uh, but just passing the existing genesis if a member node can be added. Because right, you are right, not right, adding right. a, you are not adding a validator node. You are just adding a member node, and you are just you are only using the same boot node. You have the boot node information. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that is working, otherwise it has to be a little bit different because uh, your genesis, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the keys has to be. Or the genesis has to be it has to have the keys first, isn't it? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, only one day IPFS node, so right. Yeah. In so a... when you create that uh, in the main one, only one IPFS node. But if you add another okay. member node, also create that member's IPFS node. Right. Okay. 
yeah right got it so yeah i think uh, yeah we have uh, covered the deployment part yeah of that's fine yeah as as i said it uh, looks good uh, needed some changes but mm -hmm. overall it it's fine um yeah uh, because uh, and and as i said if it is it doesn't work with um, uh, adding and adding the member easily then we have to change a little bit track and that's the same thing i'm doing for indie as mm -hmm. well uh, so basically what i'm doing is in indie i create the keys first and then i generate the genesis so the keys will be generated in each organization and then you download the whatever keys required for genesis mostly to be the public keys right you will not need any private key uh, for genesis except the validator private keys okay. uh, so yeah but we can explore that yeah yeah later. Right. so yeah that's uh, all uh, for this demo i saw thank you so much any other questions no okay. i will stop the recording now